This is part three of a four part video series regarding how to build a IP based KVM using a Raspberry Pi and the Geekworm KVM kit with the part number KVM hyphen A3. This particular video is going to be discussing how to install the interface card in your server or desktop computer and how to connect your power switch, your reset switch, your power light and your hard drive light through the interface card uh, and also connecting it to the motherboard using the attached jumper cable that is part of the kit. I will be providing Amazon affiliate links for all the products seen in this video today. We appreciate anyone using those links to help support our channel. We'll also go ahead and say that if you have not subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. Also, if you would like to receive notifications for any new videos that we'll be releasing, click that bell button below. Thanks and hope you enjoy the video. This board, this little expansion card, you'll actually need to install in your computer. And all you do is they provide a jumper that goes from this board to the motherboard uh, for the LED, for the power on, for the power switch, for the reset switch, and for the hard drive light. All right. And then you take those um cables for those uh, two leds and those two switches and plug directly into this board it allows this board to pass through the signal from those switches and lights through this board to your motherboard and so that gives the pi kvm the capabilities of monitoring the led lights as well as being able to activate the actual power and reset switch through this board which uh which is one of the features that drag and uh, high low and our are the HP uh, lights off and the IPMI systems give us as well as system admins in this section of the video what I'm going to do is sh uh, show you a video clip of me actually installing uh, um, I'm going to call it a riser card, but it's not really a riser card. It's just a face plate with a little circuit board on it. It doesn't actually physically connect into the motherboard via like a PCI slot. And what this allows uh, the system to do is to actually integrate those four circuits with the actual uh, KVM uh, via an ethernet cable. And you can actually uh, toggle power or reset all, uh, as well as view the power uh, status and the hard drive status via the KVM application. So this is just a way to be able to extend the functionality of the power switch, the reset switch, the power LED and the hard drive LED into the Pi KVM platform. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a video of me doing the install before I start that video. Let me preference it by saying, yes, you'll see that I am in what appears to be an attic space. Uh, my attic in my home is actually very spacious. It's actually climate controlled. And we are actually um, adding in some additional electrical circuits. So you will see some electrical boxes that are uh, open. I will just preference that by saying none of those connections are hot. They are just uh, preparation for some upcoming electrical work that we're going to have finished soon. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, start this video. And I'm going to talk through this and kind of explain what's going on here. And then uh, we'll wrap it up. All right. So, yep, I'm up in my attic space. I'm in my little uh, rack here. I believe it's a 12U rack or 16U rack. I can't remember right off, but in my hands, that little riser I'm talking about, it just has, um, it has four sets of inputs and four sets of outputs uh, for the power switch, reset switch, uh, hard drive light, and the power light. So what I'm going to do first is I need to break, uh, this is a fairly new case, so I need to break away one of these uh, uh, factory, uh, factory welded uh, spacers here and uh, open up a space to actually put this faceplate in there, this riser card in there. All right, so as you can see, there's two, two sections of wires. One goes to the case, one goes to the motherboard. So the, the, the jumper cable that they provide goes from that circuit board down to your motherboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove 
uh, one plug, well, one connector at a time and replace it with the one from the jumper cable. Uh, that way I don't have to go grab my manual and see uh, which pins are for what. So if you remove your power switch cable and then uh, put the one from the jumper uh, cross connect cable down there, do them one at a time, it'll make it easier. You won't have to go grab your manual or look it up on the internet what the pin out is. So I recommend doing them one at a time. And uh, that way, uh, you don't get no confusion as far as the pin out on the motherboard. All right, so I've already connected one. I'm getting ready to connect. I think that's the uh, hard drive or no, that's the power, the power LED. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that one. All right, and then let's see. The next one I'm going to do is going to be the power switch, I think. I don't remember the order I did it, but I just, there's four wires, four sets of wires. Just pull them off one pair at a time and, and replace them with the corresponding one from that uh, cable from uh, the riser there. All right, now that I got them all connected, I'm going to actually pull my cables that go to my case, that go to the switch and the LEDs, and I'm going to connect them to the corresponding uh uh, to the corresponding jumpers on this little board here. All right, now I will say that once you get all this connected, well, uh, also, uh, let, let me say this. I actually took a black marker and marked the back of this riser plate as KVM because it does use an Ethernet type uh, looking jack to communicate with the uh, Pi KVM, but uh, I indicated it uh, with a uh, with a marker. Uh, so what I did here is I actually turned the server on and verified that the LEDs and the switches worked before I actually mounted the riser just to make sure and verify that I had the correct pinouts and that the physical switches and the LEDs actually still worked. Mainly just wanted to check the um, polarity on the LED lights and make sure they were correct as well. All right, so now uh, they actually, the kit actually includes a screw to mount that faceplate into the case. So I grabbed that screw and we are screwing it down. And we are almost ready to put the case uh, lid back on. There is the Ethernet cable that is included with the kit that connects that riser card to the Pi KVM. All right, and it is just a regular Cat5e network cable from what I can tell. Um, so here we're going to just go ahead and put the case lid back on and we're going to slide the server back into its uh, resting spot in the rack here. All right. And then we're going to show you how to connect it up. You'll need an HDMI cable um, or a DVI to HDMI, depending on what the output from your motherboard is or your computer there. But mine has an HDMI cable. You'll also use the provided USB-C to USB cable to connect. So you'll take the regular USB side and connect it into your server. You'll connect your HDMI input or your HDMI output to your server. And then the yellow cable I connected to that uh, riser card that we installed. You'll see I have several network cables. So that's why I labeled that riser card as KVM. If you have multiple network cards, I would recommend that you label the KVM riser card as KVM so you don't confuse it for a network. All right, you're gonna take that USB-C uh, jump cable and connect it to the OTG input. You're gonna take the um, HDMI, connect it to the HDMI input, and then you're gonna take the yellow um, uh, network cable and connect it to the ATX network jack on the Raspberry Pi KVM. It's important that you connect it to the ATX jack. And then I connected a network cable to the ethernet port of the Raspberry Pi KVM. It turns on, it gives you some information on the little display screen there. It gives you the IP address 
and that is what you need to continue uh, with the video here. You'll need to get the you'll need to document the IP address of that KVM, and then you will go over to a, a regular desktop on your network and simply put in that IP address in your browser, and it will actually pop up a website that is being served up by that Raspberry Pi KVM unit, and from there you can log in and control your server. All right, you just finished watching part three of how to build an IP-based KVM using the Raspberry Pi and the Geekworm KVM kit with part number KVM-A3. All right, now that you have that riser card installed that connects to your power switch, your reset switch, your power light, and your hard drive light, now we'll need to move to part four of the video, which shows you how to log into the KVM and how to actually use it. Thank you for watching this video. Now's a great time to click that like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so. We appreciate everyone who is supporting the channel. Also, please feel free to check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description of the video below. It does help support the channel anytime anyone uses those links to purchase the items seen in the video. We appreciate uh, your viewership and hope that you continue on to part four of the video series.